What's up guys, it's me Desmo, and today we're playing Home, a game that I don't know too much about, although I know it's gonna be pretty short. This is literally the first screen that I was presented with, so let's get into it! You are an adventurer for hire. You take a variety of jobs and contracts to earn a living, usually involving hunting monsters or criminals, escorting merchants and royalty, etc. It's the peak of one of the worst winters in years, and a warm fire is, nece is a necessity to survive. Not long ago, you purchased your own home on the outskirts of town. It's a nice change of pace for moving between inns all the time. But after so many days of returning to an empty and bare home, you feel slightly bored of the routine. Nevertheless, you keep on working. The fire crackles warmly. You spend the day tracking. Uh, you spend the day tracking a beast that has been eating local farmers' cows. You eventually track it back to its lair and defeat it, receiving several cuts and bruises in the process. You claim your well and reward and then return home. I thought I was gonna get to do more than that. Is this the whole game? Is this the routine? You go out, you come back, you go out, you come back. You make a simple meal and sit next to the fire eating it. There's not much else to do and the day has worn you out. You go to bed. Why do I leave the fire on every time I leave the house? That doesn't seem safe. You just get a merchant carriage between two towns, facing numerous packs of bandits along the way. The long travel in the cold and frequent fighting is draining you, but you are given a good sum of gold and food for payment. You return home exhausted. Once again, you make a basic meal and fall into the chair next to the fire. You throw on some more wood to the fire and go to bed. You work as a bodyguard and guide a uh, lord visiting a nearby town. Although he is accompanied by four of his own guards, he hired you for your knowledge of the area. The lord is an unpleasant man, but the work is better than destroying monster nests in swamps. While walking through the market, the clearly inexperienced pickpocket barges into the lord and dashes off with a pouch of coins. Don't just stand there, fools! Got that scum and bring him back here! You pursue the thief through a few streets, but quickly catch up to him in a side alley and tackle him to the ground. The thief is a very young man, maybe still a teenager. Please, sir, don't kill me. I can't leave my brothers alone to fend for themselves. Please just let me have this coin and my life to- and I swear I'll never cross you again. Oh, he actually gets two things, okay. This is no way to earn a living, son! You take the coin pouch back from the thief and tell him to run. He scrambles to his feet and sprints around the corner, out of sight. You tell the lord you couldn't catch the thief, but he dropped the pouch during the chase. That scum deserved punishment, and I'll be merciful today. You at least got the coin back, that's what matters. Take half of it as payment. You may leave. Your work here is done. Soon after that, you return home. You practice some swordplay before once again le going to sleep early. You spot an unusual request on the notice board in town. A traveling alchemist is looking for a place to stay until winter ends. They're offering a hefty payment for this. You decide to take the quest and go meet them. You enter the local tavern and, as stated on the notice, the alchemist is sitting in the back corner by herself. Herself, hey, hey, we're gonna, gonna get some action, I think. You show her the notice and she beams with joy. You're a lifesaver, thank you. There's not much hope of me getting my stock back home with the winter being as bad as it is. And none of, it's, of the inns would let me... An alchemist say because I'm apparently a hazard to the other guests. Don't worry, I won't set your home on fire or blow it up or whatever it is people think alchemists do, although I may need a few of my own things so I can continue working while the weather has been cooped up around here. As she says, she drops a sack of coins on the table. You're surprised the table can take that much weight. Oh, it's a, it's a lot of coins. You return home with the alchemist. Did I choose to do this? I don't think I did. Thanks for letting me my stuff in here. Besides, this place seems like it needed a bit more life in it anyway. You really don't spend a lot of time here, huh? With the alchemist's help, you make some dinner, and the two of you sit next to the fire and eat it. You both talk about work and weird people and places you've encountered the results of it. For the first night in a long time, you spend much of it laughing and talking cheerfully. You're surprised when you realize how late it is. You help the alchemist unpack the last of her belongings and showing her to her room, you head to bed. Hey, hey! Martin, heard about this early? Here, take some of these with you. They're much better than those mass-produced potions you've been using before now. She had you several vials of healing potions and medical bandages. You take a job as a courier for the nearby town smiths, delivering weapons and armor to the, to the city. It's a long work. It's long work and tracking through the mounds of snow to get from the town to the city just makes it worse. After returning from the deliveries, you go claim your payment from the smith. As you enter the shop, you see the smith talking to his daughter, a somber look on his face. When he sees you in the doorway, he urges his daughter to go upstairs. You can tell from here that she's unwell. Her skin is snow white and she seems to be breathing slightly heavy. 
She rushes upstairs and her father's urging. Welcome back, friend, the smith says, smiling warmly. You're here for the payment, I assume. Just give me a second while I find the pouch. While I search for the coin pouch, you think about the daughter, feeling worried. I feel like he was he was trying to keep it a secret and it'd be impolite for me to ask, so I'm, I'm not gonna ask. You decide it's best not to pry into the family matters of others and make no mention of the child's health. Here you are. A good pay for good work, says the smith as he hands you your payment. You return home. Oh no, I thought he was going to tell me about the daughter anyway. You spend the night helping the alchemist make batches of potions of various kinds. You learn a lot about alchemy in the process and you place the boxes of new potions in the alchemist's carriage outside. You remember the smith's child and ask her if she is able to cure illness. According to her, if the sickness hasn't advanced too far, then it's usually possible. You end up passing through the same town as yesterday on the way from the monster hunt. You hear crowds of people shouting and cursing a few buildings over. You think it might be coming from the Smith's shop and you run there instantly. It's about townspeople inside the shop trying to break down the door. Among the shouts and roars, you hear what some of them are saying. She'll turn soon. The longer she lives, the more danger we're in. You must kill her. There's no chance for her. The majority of the mob seem to be blinded by rage, shouting th much worse things. Oh my god, she's gonna turn into like a whale for something? Kill the demon! The child must die or we all die! You thought you could hide her infection from us? You want to kill us all? You approach the mob and a few of them turn to you. Adventure, the Swiss daughter has been infected by a demon. Something might have died before she becomes an abomination herself and kills us all. You can help us, yes. Please kill the child and the smith if you have to. And you can keep everything in that shop and we'll even pay you for the work. I have a way to cure her! You explain this way to cure the child. Some of the townspeople realize how hastily they acted. In their fear, a small few keep trying to break into the shop. The calm town people restrain their enraged friends. Probably their attempt to make up for their mistakes. And you rush into the shop. You tell the smith you're here to help and you know of a way to cure the daughter. My apologies, friend, but I don't think I can trust anyone right now. My new neighbors just tried to murder us. Some of them are using weapons I made for them personally. Man, this is heavy stuff. As he says this, he looks to the, his daughter, who is hiding behind the counter. She seems bravely conscious. The smith sighs and picks her up in his arms. I have no choice but to trust this isn't some trap. Lead the way. You and the smith bolt out of the house and don't stop running until you get home. You can hear the townspeople fighting amongst themselves in the distance. Eventually you reach home. You tell the alchemist what happened. She gathers all the necessary supplies and asks you and the smith to help her. For what feels like hours, the three of you work to make potions, antidotes, and medicines. As you near the end of your stock of supplies, the child breathing calms, the skin regains its color, and she falls unconscious. The alchemist wipes her brow and she takes a breath. That should do it. She'll be as healthy as ever by tomorrow. All she needs now is rest. The Swiss falls into a chair, sobbing with joy. Thank you, friends. I have no words to express my gratitude. Whatever you may need, I am forever in your debt. We don't even have a home to return to now. I couldn't stand to look at my neighbors in the eye again. At least some of them realize the error of their ways, thanks to you. You tell the smith I can stay here for as long as they need. Does your kindness have no limit? That's twice you've saved us. We'll find a way to pay you back, I swear it! See you clear away your supplies and equipment and come back to the home the way it was. Oh my god, look at this. She's sleeping soundly. You see, I'm telling the smith about how his daughter became infected. He tried for days to find a cure, fearing what would happen if the people knew of the daughter's illness. His fears were eventually realized, and that's when you came along. You talk for a bit longer before eventually going to sleep. Exhausted, the smith stayed up all night watching over his daughter. Tad said you saved our lives. I, I don't know how to thank you for something like that, but um, thank you, friend. We are in your debt. That's what Dad would say, right? Did that sound... Okay, Dad? I think they understand, sweetie. Even a grown man like myself can't find the words to thank them for what they did. You don't need to worry about something like that. The four of you talk about various things for the night. Oh, good morning. I finished a gift for you. It should help you safe uh, as your back's against the wall. Here's your master craft dagger. It can leap with honored carvings and indentation. Oh, the where that came from. Look, it is my way to sing thanks for everything you've done for us. Take a job gathering bear pelts in the woods. You arrive at home earlier than usual. Welcome back. I'm Dad's out smithy in town, and he'll be back later on. Oh, no, I don't like this going. Oh, hey, you're back way earlier than usual. The smith isn't even here home yet. I've been looking for a little one since you left. She's been talking and interested in alchemy. I told her some of the basic stuff she's taking to pretty well. She has talent. She's also been asking about your work. I think she'd like it if you talk to her later on. So what I'm seeing is this guy is becoming more and more homebound, which probably isn't a bad thing for him seeing as how he spent all his time working and then coming home alone. You teach the Swiss daughter some of the fundamentals of defense and swordplay, evasion distance and angles and striking. The concepts don't come naturally to her, unlike alchemy. 
She's clumsy on her feet and she is easily flustered, but she refuses to stop until she makes progress. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, yeah, so he's definitely spending a lot more time at home now. And going outside all the time seems kind of boring. I can relate to that. For today, hunting monsters that have been eating delicious crops, you track it down and defeat it. Any injuries you take are quickly remedied with the alchemist supplies. You take your payment and set off home. As you trudge through the wind as the snow, you realize you've been looking forward to returning home each day. Something you haven't felt in far too long. You don't know how long this winter will last or if the others will choose to live somewhere else once it ends. You would gladly let them stay if they wanted to and something tells you they might end up doing just that. Aww. That will be a choice to be made much later on though. You approach the front door and realize that right now, the only thing you really care about is that your home? The end. Ah, uh, the sweet little game. I like it. No, I, I was debating whether I like the ending or not, but no, it's, it's it's simple and the message is sweet. That it's a great thing that you're spending time at home with people that you care about. And then he went out and found people that he cared about. I wonder what would have happened if I'd just taken the money all the time. I enjoyed that. This is the type of game I usually play or that I put up on the channel, but I enjoyed that and I enjoyed the message behind it. I liked it. It's quite, it's a different kind of vibe. I like it. I liked it. And if you liked it, make sure you leave a like down below and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this story. Should I play it again? Do something different? I don't know, maybe. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.